Hello friends, welcome to GYS. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC Civil Services and for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So currently, we have uh, 10 series that focus on your prelims and one series that focus on your mains. So what we do in these prelims oriented series, we daily cover two topics and of two topics, we cover daily, daily 10 MCQs. And in this manner, we total discuss 20 MCQs of two topics and uh, in this manner, we have picked up 10 topics for daily uh, for, for, for discussion and we will we cover them in cyclic manner that is two topics uh, for one day and then two topics for next day and in this manner five uh, ten topics are covered in uh, ten, uh, uh, five days so we will continue to do so till 31st May so the why, why the date chosen has been 31st May because on 2nd June is the prelims of UPSC CSE 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam so let's see what are the questions of today so we, uh, today in this lecture we will be covering the environment and the lecture number is 51 uh, sorry it is 52 it is been printing mistake here so it is lecture number 52 so we have to consider the following about the agenda 21 one it was adopted at the rio convention second it distributes financial resources to g20 plus one countries to mitigate climate change third one major objective of the agenda 21 is that every local government should write its own local agenda 21 so let me tell you friends that uh, uh, the first statement is correct yes it was adopted in at the rio convention that held in uh, in rio de janeiro it is also known as our summit uh, so it is a kind of sustainable it, it was it was it was uh, the uh, the the summit that focused on the sustainable development so one is correct but let me tell you friends the second statement is totally incorrect there is no logic of this statement third is yes it is correct uh, the agenda 21 that was adopted in rio de janeiro summit it 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 it, it argued for the preparation of local plans by the local uh, local national governments because the agenda 21 was to be implemented at the international level so there were there, there was a session, this was essential as that the, uh, that the local concerns are included in it so the un answer would be one and three only so the only that as, as one and two three year statement are correct so the solution is c one and three only so this is about your uh, this explanation so as i have already told you that it it achieved it aimed to achieve global sustainable development so it it, it was uh, can declare agenda 21 was declared by the leaders in 1992 at the united nation conference on environment and sustainable development that was held in rio de janeiro brazil so this is about your first question so let's move on to the second question second question is sanitary and phytosanitary measures of wto are related to so friends there is an agreement on uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures uh, so oh, oh, it, it is an international agreement of world trade organization so it has been asked that it is related to first health and safety regulation b protection to biodiversity c providing funding support to member nations to achieve zero defecation d both a and b so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is d both a and b it, it includes the health and safety regulations and the protection to biodiversity so basically it regulates the unrestricted uh, unrestricted uh, the, the, it, it regulates the trade in in unrestricted uh, communities which are which are not listed in the restricted communities that that are that are banned for for, for international trade so basically it regulates those with the communities which 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 concern themselves uh, which are unrestricted so it is basically a kind of standard the which which uh, every country has to meet before before kind of exporting uh, kind of uh, a particular a kind of a particular commodity so it it relates relates to health health and safety regulations and also to protection of biodiversity so the solution is d so here is justification so it is basically the international like, treaty of world trade organization uh, and uh, under this uh, wto sets constraint on member states policies relating to the food safety bacterial contaminants pesticides inspection and labeling as well as animal and uh, plant health phytosanitation with respect to important pests and diseases so this is about your second question so let's move on to the third question what is common between the birds stroke flamingo pintail duck and curlew a they have been depicted in sanchi inscriptions b their habitat ranges are extremely narrow due to which they are th greatly threatened by climate change and habitat destruction c they have flat topped bodies and that allow them to survive in hot regions d uh, they are migratory birds so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is the d that is they are migratory birds so the correct answer is d so here is an in detail explanation so there it is it is there are certain birds that are, uh, migrate to india in different seasons for example pelican siberian crane stroke flamingo pintail duck and curlew especially for siberian crane, crane siberian crane is prominent because it migrates uh, to india in in winter season and stays till march so let's move on to the fourth question. The fourth question is consider the following about the World, World Sustainable Development Summit. Uh, first, this is an annual event of energy and uh, uh, friends, this here is a typing mistake. Uh, it must be here, Energy and uh, Research Institute. Uh, 
so this is the annual event of energy and research institute second it is organized by ministry for new and renewable energy government of india third pm chairs wsds so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is one only because uh, under here is mistake also so third is not included one and three it must be one and three because pm chairs no 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 it must be one only so the answer must be a because only one statement is correct so the solution is a so actually i made in in this 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 pdf in quite hurry so there was a typing error so sorry for that uh, so solution is a so actually it is an annual event of energy and resources institute so it is it was which was earlier known as the delhi sustainable development summit so it changed in its name into world sustainable development summit in 2016 so it was actually started in 2001 and uh, it it brings together different leaders and different civil society members and also heads of states and nobel laureates different Incurs uh, it on issues related to sustainable sustainable development. Fifth question is the Chenar tree which grows throughout the Kashmir Valley attracts a lot of attention of visitors and locals during a autumn season, b winter season, c monsoon season, d spring season. So let me tell you friends that the answer is a autumn season. This Chenar tree attracts the uh, the the kind of attention of visitors during this uh, autumn season, approximately in October, October and November month. Why it attracts uh, the attraction because it changes its color. Uh, uh, in other months it remains green in color, but in in these particular months in two these two months that is october and november in autumn season it changes its colors into different beautiful colors so answer is a so it is straight tree of j and k so it is quite large and wide and uh, it changes its color into colorful hues of blood red mauve amber amber and yellow so also i have included the image of it so you can see it the, so these are red leaves and these are some like yellow and i don't know which for what to name these that are in 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 middle of this uh, girls can more more aptly define these colors because boys only know few colors black blue red green yellow so it is it is a, it is the kind of uh, um, uh, kind of uh, iq level of girls that that enables them to dis uh, kind of uh, uh, distinct between different colors so sixth is uh, consider the following about the vena convention for the protection of ozone layer one it entered in force after montreal protocol uh, uh, second it includes legally binding uh, uh, reduction goals for the use of cfc uh, cs and third is uh, third is it has been ratified by all uh, united nations member states so friends give me one second let me check one thing Huh, yeah let's see what is the question a uh, uh, it is it is about vena convention so these are the statements that i have given to you that uh, that it, it entered into force after the montreal protocol second it included legally binding reduction goals for the use of cfcs uh, third it has been ratified by all united nation member states so we have to choose the correct answer so let's see what is the correct answer so first of all let me tell you friends that it was not introduced after the montreal protocol in actual practice it and it entered into force with the montreal yeah it was introduced earlier but it entered into force after this montreal protocol and also yes let me tell you friends it is it is an international intergovernmental organization and uh, sorry this this your uh, this uh, <clears throat> vena convention is a kind of uh, international protocol which uh, which which uh, which 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 was entered into force uh, with with montreal protocol and yes vienna convention is related to ozone layer montreal protocol is actually a protocol which deals with the greenhouse gases the reduction in those gases that deplete ozone layer so montreal protocol is quite quite success so let me tell you friends that second is correct yes it includes legally binding reduction goals for cfcs uh, third is it has been ratified by all united nation members so answer would be second and three Uh, uh, two and three only. That is, answers should be B. So as I have already provided you in detail explanation. So let's move on to the next question, the seventh question. Seventh question is: It is the largest protected area in the Eastern Himalayan biodiversity hotspot and harbors the northernmost low land evergreen rainforest in the world. Uh, the habitat changes with increasing altitude uh, from tropical moist forests to montane forests. Uh, 
temperate forests and at higher elevations to alpine meadows and perennial snow so the national park is so this is kind of description given of a national park so we have to choose which national park uh, this question is talking about a namdapa national park b dachigam national park c nokrek national park d kanchanjunga national park let me tell you friends that the correct answer is namdapa national park so it is basically in in arunachal pradesh state of uh, of of india so this uh, this is namdapa uh, this is now this this uh, this question talks about the namdapa national park so it has a rich uh, biodiversity um, because of its different Uh, forest uh, uh, that is uh, mountain forest to temperate forest to, to, to alpine meadows and perennial snow and uh, yes it is it is it is the northern uh, please keep it in mind it it hosts it is the largest protected area in eastern himalayan biodiversity hotspot and harbors a northwestern north northern most lowland evergreen tree forests so the answer is a so let's uh, see this is explanation so already have provided you the explanation So let's move on to the eighth question. Eighth question is: Persistent organic pollutants are toxic organic chemical substances. Uh, show which of the following properties. So here we have been asked that which of the following properties are shown by the persistent organic pollutants. One accumulate in the water component of the bodies of living organisms and thus spread to higher trophic levels. Second, found at the high concentrations at higher levels in the food chain. So let me tell you, friends, we have to choose the correct answer. So most of you people will say that both one and two is correct. Let me tell you, friends, that one is incorrect. It is not. It it yes, it, it accumulates, but not in water tissues of the body of the living organism, but in fact in the fat tissues. So the first First statement is wrong, but yes, second is in, uh, second is correct. It 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 assumes higher concentration at higher levels in the food chain. So the answer would be second only. So the solution is B. So here is explanation. It is basically they are carbon-based compounds and they have become widely distributed now. They have actually accumulate in fatty tissues of the living organisms and also they are toxic to both humans and wildlife. And also stock, uh, there is a convention that 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 that, that aims to eliminate uh, the, their uh, their production and use and consumption. This is uh, this is Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. And and India is a signatory to the, this convention. Please keep it this in mind. Ninth is Mrs. Hume Hume's pigeon pigeon is found in in its its natural harbor in a Western Indian Desert, b Ladakh region, c wetlands of uh, Uttar Pradesh, d east north eastern uh, India. So let me tell you, friends, the correct correct answer is north eastern India. Actually, it is found in uh, north eastern Indian states. For example, Nagaland, uh, these Mizor Mizoram and Manipur. So uh, Manipur. Nagaland Mizoram uh, so in India this is found it is actually state bird of Manipur so this has been trapped uh, uh, it is a major cause of also its decline because it it can be trapped easily so this is the the image of this this bird which we are talking about so it is legally protected in India Thailand and Myanmar and China so let's move on to the last question of the day 10th question 10th question is consider the following about the energy and research institute resources institute first uh, it is a research arm of ministry of environment forest and climate change second oil zapper technology for bioremediation of oily sludge and oil slips Was developed by Terry. So we have to choose the correct uh, statement. Let me tell you, friends, that the first is incorrect because it it is it doesn't come under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It is an independent institute that that kind of engages in research for the for the sustainable development. And it or as as question previous question came, it also organizes annually World Sustainable Development Summit, which was earlier known as Delhi Sustainable Development Summit. So the answer here would be only the second. So the answer would be B. That is second only. So here. Here is explanation. Solution is B. So here is justification of it. So it is a leading think tank that de uh, dedicated to conducting research for sustainable development of India and global south. So it was established in 1974. And 70% of oil refineries in India use oil zapper technology that is developed by the Terry. So it is a kind of uh, bacterial consortium that degrades crude oil and oil sludge and has reclaimed thousands of hectares of contaminated cropland in different parts of India. So also, in fact, this Griha, uh, that is uh, green rating for integrated habitat assessment, was conceived by Terry. So it is a national. Rating system for for green buildings in India, and also it has they has developed another technology that is mic mycorrhizal technology, which has uh, which has made its mark in commercially as a commercially successful bio fertilizer in India. So this this is all about today's lecture, friends. If you like the questions, please like the video, and if you like the questions, then please do share it with your friends. Also, and do ensure that you subscribe to our channel. And lastly, friends.
let me tell you that if you want to subscribe to the PDFs of these MCQs, then you can contact us at this email ID that is gis21 at the rate, 20, uh, at the rate gmail dot com or, or at other uh, or at, at our contact number that is eight nine six eight four two six four eight one. So friends, uh, in, in 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 case you wish to join to the PDF, explanation PDFs of these videos, then you can contact us at this number. So obviously there will be a minimum charge for it, uh, that which which is kept for our motivation purposes so that we can also remain motivated for 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 continuous continuous working and uh, and uh, let me tell you friends that why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to revise through uh, uh, kind of standard books and also you will not have the time to to see 25 to 30 minute long videos so at that time you must have some kind of notes to revise the basic concepts and the important concepts quickly so these pdfs are made in the form that uh, that it, it, it in these include the questions that are important from your prelims point of view and also con con it, it contains concepts that are important for you people from the prelims point of view as well as it co uh, covers your uh, syllabus comprehensively so in this manner you can also revise your concepts quickly so in th in this manner these pdfs can help you so if you wish to subscribe then you can contact at this number contacted this number or at, or at this email id so this is all about today's video thank you friends have a nice day please do subscribe to our channel and do ensure that you press the bell icon